Welcome to the fall recap video of my Stardew Valley 100% Perfection Guide, where we are trying to earn as much money as possible in as little time as possible and achieve each of the perfection goals as soon as we can. In this run, I was able to unlock Skull Cavern on day 17 of spring, which allowed us to farm Iridium or to afford 640 starfruit seeds for the first day of summer. I was able to expand the fields to hold 960 starfruit crops for the second and third harvest of summer, bringing our total starfruit yield from summer to around two and a half thousand. We also spent a lot of time setting up a tree farm to obtain lots of wood and oak resin, which we will need for kegs, as the plan is to turn our starfruit into wine during the fall and winter. There were many more achievements made during the spring and summer, so if you have not seen those recap videos, I recommend checking them out before this one, and I will leave a link for that. This video will cover the entire month of fall and give a recap on everything I did, and I'll explain many of the tips and tricks I use. If you are interested in this run in greater detail, also consider checking out the playlist with the individual episodes, which will go through the run day by day in much more detail, which I will leave a link to. This fall recap video will serve as a nice reflection on our run so far for those who have been following along, and it will also be great for those who have not by providing a nice summary of all we did in this third month of the run, fall. The main goal for fall from a min-max perspective is to craft lots of kegs and turn our starfruit from summer into wine. From the perfection goal perspective, there is much much more to accomplish and lots of little things to remember. A good example of something small that may be overlooked is collecting all of the rare crows since the deluxe scarecrow recipe is needed for the craft everything perfection goal. There will be many of these little things in the month of fall, along with much bigger tasks, such as working towards maximum friendship with the NPCs and catching every fish. And another very important task we will accomplish this fall is completing the community center, which is always a big milestone in any Stardew run and will unlock a lot of new content too. We are able to do this on fall day 21 and if you wonder how this is possible to do before winter, due to items such as the Nautilus shell, Crocus, and Snow Yam being needed, just keep watching and you'll see very soon. And of course, all of these tasks that we want to accomplish in fall, we will attempt to do in the shortest amount of time as possible. This is what I find to be more unique about this run, that we are not solely focusing on min-maxing profit by earning the most money in the least time, but also min-maxing perfection goals by trying to complete the most tasks in the least time. This is the big idea of this run, so I hope you enjoy this third recap video of Fall Year One, and now let's get started with the gameplay. We begin the first day of fall waking up to a field of 960 wheat crops which we harvest. We planted this wheat on day 27 of summer in order to keep our farmland hoed and watered for today, similar to what we did the last day of spring with the parsnip seeds. Unlike parsnips, wheat can grow both in summer and fall, so we actually collect the wheat crop as a bonus to the preservation of our land. After harvesting the wheat, we must decide what crop to plant in its place. The best two options are cranberries and pumpkins. Without putting anything in kegs, Pumpkins would give an overall better profit. Cranberries do have a lot of potential still though, because we get two and sometimes three per harvest, which would give us a bunch of crops we could throw in seed makers to try to get a bunch of ancient seeds for year two. However, unlocking cranberries full potential would take a lot of time and resources to craft and use the seed makers. Further, we don't want to keg cranberries, since all of our kegs should be used for starfruit. Due to these reasons, I decide on pumpkins, and overall pumpkins seemed easier, and we can just grow them, 
and sell them as is for some nice extra money. After deciding on pumpkins, we sell some iridium bars to Clint to purchase 960 pumpkin seeds plus a smaller amount of every other type of fall seed. It is important that we grow every crop for the ship everything perfection goal and some crops are nice to have extra of for gifting, crafting, and cooking. Most importantly though, we will need some fall crops for the community center, which we will be aiming to complete on fall day 21. I know this day is the earliest we can complete the community center by using Mousy Pound's predictor tool, which has a function to show what the traveling cart will be selling. I do have a video showcasing how to use the tool if you are interested, you can find a link in the description. In my save, the traveling cart sells a nautilus shell on day 21. Of course, we will also somehow need to acquire a crocus and snow yam before winter, which we will soon see in this video. For now, we return back to the farm and plant the 960 pumpkin seeds, and we use the remaining time on day one to make a new smaller field to plant the extra seeds. We pass out and move on to day two, when we wake up to an upgraded house which we bought from Robin on day 27 of summer. Very importantly, I move the bed next to the door so we can exit our house very quickly when we wake up. The time this saves us will add up as the days progress. We craft our first of many kegs today and we'll start processing some coffee beans and later brew some beer and pale ale for the ship everything perfection goal. Once we get a higher number of kegs, we will start placing them around the bus stop and process our starfruit into wine at that time. The bus stop is close to our house, and few NPCs walk through it, making it an ideal place to stash additional kegs. For now, we will cycle these kegs here on the farm. Speaking of that, there is quite a large range of tasks we must tend to frequently on and off of the farm that I may not mention or speak much more about in this video. One such example is collecting the mushrooms from the farm's cave, which come in handy as extra healing food for Skull Cavern. Another is harvesting and baiting the crab pots on the farm, which provide recyclable trash, which we can turn into a variety of extra resources, as well as fish that could be used for the quality fertilizer crafting in year two. Some other tasks include cycling machinery, such as the seed maker or cheese press, petting the farm animals and gathering their products, and chopping trees around the map and the secret wood stumps. Essentially, there are quite a number of miscellaneous tasks in this run that become pretty repetitive, but they are still very important for gathering resources for later, so don't forget they exist. Further into day two, when we go to town, we notice Robin and Lewis have put up the special orders board. In this run, we are going to take what is offered to us and just hope for some good quests, because resetting to try to get good first quests would require rolling back a day and then replaying a full day, which takes way too much real life time. I do go into greater detail in my fall day one through two video if you are interested. We will end up picking Pierre's Prime Produce, which will award us a mini shipping bin. Not too exciting. Once we are in town, we give Penny a melon for her birthday and buy some more seeds to fill the remaining space on our field. We end this day in the mines farming dust sprites, which we may end up doing many times as we did in summer if we have extra time at the end of the day. We move on to day three and start off strong by catching the angler fish. We will need to catch every fish for perfection and we manage to catch every unique fall fish on day three and day five of fall. This includes the salmon, midnight carp, sea cucumber, super cucumber, eel, and walleye. We also chop some trees and the secret wood stumps to gather wood and hardwood and get closer to level 10 foraging which I will continue to do through the entire month of fall. Another thing I will do many times is give gifts to NPCs as I pass through town in order to increase friendship, as maximum friendship is a perfection goal. We spend day four at Skull Cavern 
and since it is a Thursday, we pick up a magic rock candy from the Desert Trader. Every Thursday of this run going forward, I will be making an effort to pick up a magic rock candy. On day 5, along with fishing, gathering, and gifting, we buy the deluxe coop upgrade and shove some beets into Mayor Lewis's fridge for some reason. Since today was a rainy day, I unfortunately could not give Elliot a birthday gift. For some reason, the guy that lives on a beach is afraid to get a little wet. On day 6, we have a quick skull cavern dive leading us to day 7, which happens to be a super luck day, which we take full advantage of by using two magic rock candies in one dive and are able to make it to floor 188 and obtain 530 iridium ore and 11 prismatic shards and even an auto petter and a lucky ring. This dive was pretty insane so I recommend checking out that video if you are interested. Moving to day 8, we have a not as exciting skull cavern dive, but on day 9, our first harvest of 960 pumpkins is ready, which gives us the final item needed for the pantry bundles in the community center, which we can complete to unlock the greenhouse. We also are close to completing the fish tank bundles and just need a sandfish, so we head to the desert and catch one, and also have a long and tiring battle with a scorpion carp. We drop off all the items we have for the community center, including a walleye, eel, tiger trout, and sandfish, which completes the fish tank bundles, which will remove the glistening boulder unlocking panning. We also drop off some animal products, artisan goods, and a pomegranate and apple which grew from our fruit trees planted in summer. We finish off the pantry bundles by donating our fall crops and will unlock the greenhouse overnight. And while we're in town, we pick up our gold watering can from Clint and sell some Iridium bars. We also sell most of our pumpkins to Pierre, and with the extra money, buy three of each fruit tree sapling, and enough pumpkin seeds to plant 960 tonight, and 960 for next harvest. We wake up on day 10 with a repaired greenhouse and plant all the fruit tree saplings in there, which will mature in 28 days. We then head up to the mountains and receive the copper pan from Willie to unlock panning. Before the 1.5 update, I ignored the pan completely, but now there's actually some more useful things we can get from it, which we will see later in winter. We arrive at the tree farm and place some more tappers and chop some trees. Whenever I chop trees, I will try to use a foraging buff food, such as an autumn's bounty for increased wood. In town, we choose Demetrius's aquatic overpopulation quest from the special orders board and buy 350 coal from Clint. It is hard to know if it is more worth it to farm dust sprites for coal or straight up buy it, but I decide to buy some because we are low and it does save us a lot of time. We start day 11 by hoeing and watering the dirt in the greenhouse to be ready for seeds, then sell iridium bars at Clint's to buy the iridium hoe upgrade and buy Deluxe Speed Grow and Seeds from Sandy. We feed the Sand Dragon a Solar Essence and pick up a Magic Rock Candy before heading back to the farm to plant the seeds in the greenhouse. We plant 100 Starfruit Seeds so we can turn more into wine for profit, and then some Ancient Fruit and Strawberry Seeds so we can start gaining more of those seeds by feeding them to the seed makers. Next, we go to town on a gift-giving spree and give Jody a diamond for her birthday, and finish the day at the ocean, catching albacore to complete the aquatic overpopulation quest. Day 12 is spent at Skull Cavern, which leads us to day 13, a very important day, Abigail's birthday. And I guess it's also a Saturday, which means the desert trader is trading winter seeds in exchange for two spring seeds, which we will need to complete the community center early. Before that, we head to town to complete NPC quests and give out gifts including a pumpkin for Abigail's birthday. At the carpenter shop, we buy the second house upgrade, then head to the desert trader where we give him 10 spring seeds in exchange for 5 winter seeds, which will hopefully provide us a crocus and snow yam after growing in the greenhouse. On day 14, we have a super luck skull cavern dive but only use one magic rock candy. Looking back, I think it is much more worth it to use two magic rock candies in one day 
rather than two across two different days, since two and one will allow a much deeper dive with much more iridium gain. Even with just using one, we make it to floor 197 by utilizing the usual strategies of pausing, ring swapping, bombing, and crafted staircases. In my day 14 video, I go into more detail about some Skull's cavern strategies, including pausing and ring swapping, the in-game time differences, and resource allocation, so I do recommend checking it out if you'd like to hear more. On day 15, we plant the 5 winter seeds in the greenhouse and give Sandy a sweet pea for her birthday before spending the day at Skull Cavern. Day 16 is the day of the Stardew Valley Fair, which we will need to attend to obtain the Star Drop. Mayor Lewis judges our Grange display and awards us the first place prize of 1000 star tokens. We play the spinning wheel game and bet our tokens on green every time, which has a 75% chance to land on as opposed to the oranges 25%. The general strategy is to bet half of your tokens on green every time, and if you are interested, you can read more about the Stardew Valley Fair and token strategy on the Stardew Valley Wiki. After gaining more than enough star tokens, we purchase the star drop and other items and end the day at the tree farm where we collect oak resin and add more tappers to the bunch. On day 17, along with our second set of 960 pumpkins, a sweet gem berry that we planted from a rare seed on the first day of fall is ready for harvest and we give it to Old Master Cannoli in the Secret Woods to obtain another star drop. We also buy the final house upgrade from Robin to unlock the cellar, and select Gunther's Fragments of the Past quest from the Special Orders board. We finish up the day harvesting and replanting the 960 pumpkins, and place an initial 21 kegs by the bus stop to start processing starfruit wine. We start day 18 with a gift-giving spree and give Marty a pink cake for her birthday. We then drop off 100 bone fragments at Gunther's museum and head to the mines to slay enough skeletons to gain the remaining bone fragments needed to complete Gunther's special order quest, which will unlock the recipe for the bone mill. As usual, we pick up a magic rock candy from the desert trader as it is a Thursday and we will always have a surplus of prismatic shards to spend on candy. We finish the day by finding a strange card in the lumber pile at our house, called the club card, concluding the strange Mr. Key casino questline. On day 19, the results are in for the winter seed, and we do get very lucky with both a crocus and snow yam. We spend the rest of the day, and day 20, with some lucrative Skull Cavern dives. This brings us to day 21, the day we have been waiting for, when we can complete the community center. We buy the Nautilus shell from the traveling cart, and can finally donate the last few items to the community center. With the Nautilus shell and wine, we complete the bulletin board bundles, which adds two hearts of friendship with all NPCs. The Crocus and Snow Yam complete the Crafts Room bundles, which repairs the bridge to the quarry. Now that we have completed the community center as a whole, we will also get access to the Wizard's Magic Ink quest, the missing bundle in Joja Mart, and the ability to unlock Ginger Island. Lots of new possibilities. We then go to the Carpenter Shop to give Robin a goat cheese for her birthday, and purchase all of the crafting recipes Robin sells for the craft everything completion goal. Next, we warp to the desert to trade jade for staircases on staircase Sunday and then buy some more starfruit seeds for the greenhouse from Sandy, then plant them in the greenhouse, bringing us to the end of this long day. On day 22, we begin the wizard's quest when we enter the north woods and tend to the tree farm as well. Then we talk to Robin to move our farm buildings around a little before buying a fish pond, which we will need to get row, aged row, and caviar for the shipping everything perfection goal. Caviar is also needed in the missing bundle. 
When we enter the town, we are greeted with the community center completion cutscene, and Pierre sends Morris flying away to never be seen again. We next check the special orders board and pick up Robin's resource rush quest, which will unlock the stone chest, which is not the most useful thing, but it is better for me than the geode crusher from Clint's quest, and that crafting recipe is needed for the craft everything perfection goal. The next stop is the sewer to talk to Krobus about the dark talisman, and he unlocks the mutant bugler for us, which we easily sweep through and obtain the dark talisman. From here, we warp straight to the desert and enter Sandy's oasis. We show our new club card to the bouncer and enter the casino, because today does happen to be a super luck day, which increases the chance of better rewards in the slot machine which we will be playing. After a long real life time, but zero in-game time, we get extremely lucky with the triple star drop reward for a reward of 2500 times our 100 key coin bet for a total gain of 250,000 key coins. I buy the rare crow with many key coins to spare since the rare crow is the only thing I came for and it's needed for perfection. I could technically purchase a hardwood fence for 100 key coins and sell it for 10 G but it's too small amount of money to be worth it, as the grand prize of 250 key coins would convert to a mere 25,000 G. Hypothetically, we could make an infinite amount of money from the casino since in-game time does not pass in the slot machine, but it would take way too much real life time to be worth it at all. After warping back, we chop some wood, then head back to the railroad and enter the witch's hut, prepared with a void mayonnaise for the goblin henchman, then enter the hut to retrieve the wizard's magic ink. We return it to the wizard in his tower and unlock the shop station, which will allow us to purchase various magical buildings later on. For now, we end the day in the bushes with Abigail and also do a little interior decorating before falling asleep after another long day. Day 23 is a nice skull cavern dive before day 24, which is yet another long day filled with lots of activities. Most of our tappers are ready with oak resin, so we harvest those before heading to town. We visit Caroline in her greenhouse having two hearts with her, so the next day she will send us a tea tree recipe in the mail. We will have to ship a tea leaf and a green tea for perfection. Up next, George receives a leak for his birthday and we buy a shed from Robin, which we will eventually fill up with crystallariums with jade to trade for many staircases. After this, we make our first ever visit to the quarry and start blowing up the rocks as we won't be using it for the ore, but rather for the space to plant trees. Before that, let's take a quick sweep through the quarry mine dungeon to obtain the gold scythe, which could come in handy for harvesting wheat with its increased range, Back at the quarry, we start planting all of the extra tree seeds we have, effectively turning the quarry into a new tree farm. We will use the quarry here for chopping trees for wood, while the other tree farm by the railroad will be used for tree tapping. With gaining a lot more oak resin today, we are able to craft 29 kegs and pick up the 16 currently on the farm for a total of 45 kegs to add to the bus stop area. We collect the 21 starfruit wine that is ready, then place the new kegs for a total of 66 kegs to brew 66 starfruits into wine. Finally, we plant some mahogany and oak seeds on our farm with tree fertilizer, then pass out to be greeted with a lightning strike at the old Joja Mart. Unlocking the ability to complete the missing bundle now. We also finally reach foraging level 10, and of course, grab the botanist profession to guarantee iridium forageables. Not only does it make obtaining iridium forageables possible, but it also makes every forageable collected in the future stack, which saves some inventory space. We wake up to the lightning storm on day 25, which we take full advantage of by crafting and placing 18 new lightning rods, and by using a rain totem later in the day, which will guarantee another lightning storm the next day. 
The final harvest of 960 pumpkins is ready, which we harvest and replant with wheat since we have just a few days left of fall. We also warp to the desert to pick up a magic rock candy and make our best purchase yet. A magic cowboy hat for 333 omni geodes. How could you ever say no to those colors? On day 26, we have a super luck day paired with two magic rock candies at Skull Cavern, making it to floor 189 with a nice haul of 525 iridium ore. On day 27, the 960 wheat is already ready to be harvested, so we do that before putting some cheese into the casks in our new cellar. We spend most of the day organizing our storage and cleaning up the farm a bit by removing the sprinklers, which will not be needed for winter. We head out to town right before the 1150 cutoff for the Spirits Eve Festival, which we must attend to purchase the Rare Crow and Jack-O-Lantern recipe for perfection. We also get a free golden pumpkin and some free friendship points with the townsfolk, which is nice. We're back at the farm at 12am and end the day with a little more interior decorating. We have now finally reached the final day of fall, day 28, where we continue organizing our storage and cleaning up the farm. We also decorate the farm for the first time by placing some stone paths, which can be argued to be a waste of time in a min-max run, but it really doesn't take up all that much time and resources, and of course they look really nice, but they also serve as nice boundaries for where I will plan to have my fields, buildings, and machines set up for year two. We can also take a quick look at my Stardew Valley farm planner design, which shows what I have based my current setup off of for the future, and where future components of the farm will go. Of course, this plan was made quite a while ago, so when I pick up the run again for year two, I may be changing the layout around a bit. Feel free to suggest some farm ideas for year two of this run. My goal is to keep with the min-max spirit of the run, with having lots of crop space, buildings, and machinery, but since we really won't need a whole lot of money during year two, I also want to do a bit of decorating and make the farm setup look nice. Along with the design and layout, we also have to consider what crops to actually plant during year two, both on our farm and on Ginger Island. The best option for the main farm would be ancient fruit, since it grows during the spring, summer, and fall. It sells at a base price of 550G as opposed to Starfruit 750G, but since it grows during three seasons, we would end up with a higher total profit for the three seasons with Ancient Fruit, as opposed to something like Strawberries in Spring, Starfruit in Summer, and Pumpkins or Cranberries in Fall. Further, Ancient Fruit is a crop that grows back, so we would not have to replant it like we would for Starfruit, saving us some time. Having a full field of ancient fruit would be most ideal, but unfortunately, we most likely will not be able to acquire enough ancient fruit seeds to cover our entire farm at the start of year two. Once our first harvest comes in, we could turn the ancient fruit into more seeds, and then we'd likely have enough, but since ancient fruit takes two weeks to grow, and I would like a full field of crops from the start, I would like to explore some other options as well, so, we have to start thinking about what crops we want to plant in addition to the ancient fruit. As mentioned earlier, we could do strawberries in spring and starfruit in summer, but what I think might actually be better for those months is coffee. Coffee beans will regrow every other day and grow in both spring and summer, and we can rely on the junimos to harvest them for us. Coffee beans are most profitable when turned into coffee at the cost of keg time, so we could use our existing keg setup to turn a whole bunch of coffee beans into coffee quickly, as by the time we are finished sticking our last beans into the keg, the first round should be finished, so we can just keep repeating the cycle very efficiently. This would also supply us with all the triple shot espresso we could ever want, but a certain ring in our future will do that as well, so we'll likely be selling most of the coffee we gain. Since coffee beans do not grow in fall, we would probably plant some cranberries in place since they are also a profitable crop that grows back, and we may even try to incorporate some smaller fields of other types of crops as well in case we need any for crafting, cooking, or gifting. 
And we need not worry about coffee taking up the starfruit space on the field during summer, since we have Ginger Island. The great thing about Ginger Island is the farm space there essentially acts as the greenhouse does, and allows us to grow any crop regardless of the season. This means we can constantly grow starfruit there to keep getting a supply for our kegs. Unfortunately, we can't build Junimo huts there, so frequently regrowing crops are best planted on the farm. I'll continue talking about Ginger Island shortly, which we will visit on Winter Day 2 for the first time, but before that, we must finish up Day 28 and the entire month of fall. This month of fall for the run has been filled with a huge variety of different objectives, putting us closer to having tons of starfruit wine to sell for huge profit, and putting us closer to completing each of the perfection goals. We spend the last moments of this last day going inside Linus's tent, and getting some wood. This brings us towards the end of this recap video, but first, let's take a glimpse into the month of winter for this run. We will begin the first day of winter by repairing Willie's secret project boat in order to access Ginger Island the next day. Our first visit to Ginger Island will be filled with lots of fun stuff, as well as opportunities to use our min-max knowledge to optimize our time spent there. This includes a fast-paced volcano run to gather lots of cinder shards and make it to the forge, which will let us combine rings and enchant tools. We will also collect some golden walnuts, unlock the island farm, and begin clearing it so we can soon start planting starfruit there. We'll have lots of ginger island adventures during winter, and of course also continue working towards perfection. We will keep crafting more and more kegs to turn our starfruit into wine, to make huge profits to be able to afford the obelisks and gold clock. We will continue completing quests and gaining friendship with the NPCs, and eventually complete the missing bundle to unlock the movie theater, which may help with friendship. And of course, we will have more Skull Cavern dies, sometimes with a twist, and continue gathering resources and preparing the farm for year two, and all the crops we will be filling the fields with then. If you are looking forward to all of this, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see the videos when they come out. If this run is interesting to you, and you'd like to see the days in greater detail, do consider checking out my playlist with all the individual videos that go through the run day by day in more detail, and I do my best to explain everything I'm doing, and add in lots of tips and information that can be applied in any Stardew Valley playthrough. I would also greatly appreciate it if you could leave a comment with anything you'd like to say, perhaps with any tips or tricks you would like to share with me and the community. As always, thank you for watching, and goodbye.